In this episode, celebrate the most colorful event in the Chinese calendar with a flavorful feast. Experience the calming effects of candlelight. Embrace the season of love. Take a look at some fashion-forward wedding dresses. And of course, complete the wedding look with the perfect bridal shoes. favorite Chinese New Year dish is the traditional New Year cake. I love its gooey, sticky texture and the meaning that comes with it, symbolizing reaching new heights in the coming year. Well, this time of year is all about good wishes. And what's better than edible good wishes? Now, my mom would always make lots and lots of dumplings since dumplings are said to be filled with good luck. And you know, Chinese parents, they always say, good fortune will come your way if you eat the right food. Symbolically, Lunar New Year is about doing away with the old of the previous year and beginning anew to usher in health, prosperity and good fortune for the year ahead. That being so, we've got to try something new to ring in the Year of the Ox. If you're bored with the traditional dishes that are served during the festive dinners, having spicy dishes from Sichuan is going to be a great way to spice things up. The popular Sichuan spicy boiled fish is not only satisfying, but its bright red colour can also bring in good luck, if staying auspicious is something you care about. Joyce, I really like this level of spiciness because this level I can actually handle and enjoy eating. Um, it's a little bit mouth numbing though, but just the way I like it. Well, I've always been a fan of spicy food myself. It's full of aroma, particularly flavorful, keeps us warm during winter, and perfect for Chinese New Year gatherings. The core of Lunar New Year is ultimately a celebration of home and family. That's why gathering with family around the dining table is the most important event. Since the festive celebration is about family enjoying some good food, why not roll up your sleeves and whip up something to make the dinner more interesting? Crushing spices and century eggs with mortar and pestle by yourself is fun to do, and it also makes the dish extra aromatic and tasty. After having a dish made with century eggs, it's time to elevate your New Year dinner with a dish that has a century-old history. Peking duck was once a regular feature at the Empress dining table. With a whole duck roasted to perfection, the dish delivers a rich medley of flavours and textures, something truly worth all the hype. And the way to savour the crispy duck meat brings lots of fun too. Though the process of wrapping the meat in a soft and piping hot pancake with cucumbers, green onions and dipping sauce can be a little tricky, the whole experience can surely strike up exciting conversations over the festive dinner. Joyce, I have to say, Chinese New Year is my favourite time of year. It's usually the liveliest time of the year as well. People are always genuinely happy and they greet one another with lucky sayings. Like my family and I will always enjoy going to the flower market at Victoria Park and sometimes we do countdown there as well. Chinese New Year is about spending quality time with your family. You know we're always so busy throughout the year, but this is a time to pause and enjoy. Last year, me and my family made time and we all went to Thailand together. Oh, I really miss our trip! In Chinese, lotus root is li ngao, sounds like li ngao, which means having plenty every year. The auspicious meaning of lotus root made it one of the most popular ingredients for making celebratory dishes. Another popular ingredient is shrimp. Besides its symbolic meaning of liveliness, like lotus root, its Chinese name ha sounds like laughter, making it an auspicious food that everyone loves. Apart from enjoying all the savoury dishes, 
Lunar New Year is also an excellent time for people to gorge on desserts and snacks and have their sweet tooth all satisfied. And when it comes to family dinner, glutinous rice dumplings are a must-have dessert. Besides sesame, bean paste or peanut fillings, the Shanghai style mini glutinous rice dumplings in sweet rice wine is also a crowd pleaser. Another must-have for the new year is the tray of togetherness. That is the Chinese New Year candy box. Here, the plate of sweets comes in a dessert form. With taro balls, peanuts, dry fruits, ice jelly and many more, this wholesome dessert is the best way to eat your way towards a better Lunar New Year. It seems like working from home has become the new normal these days. But when your place of rest has become your office, it might be a bit hard to kick back and relax even in your own home. But there's a method to make your home a sanctuary. Fragrance, for example, can create a calm and restful ambience. Fragrance usually affect our moods. Some people would like to use diffusers and some people would like to use perfume. Um, but also, we could also put a fragrance oil into our candles. And nowadays, I believe the Korean flower design is relatively popular these days. Uh, it could come in the form of dessert candle, candle design, and also soy flower candle. I believe um, the soy flower candle is uh, relatively natural, and um, because of the nature of the wax, it's um, made from soybeans, and also it's a form of the hydrogenated soybean oil, so which um, makes it the ingredients more natural and also renewable. It is safe to use and also very good for the environment. The whole candle making process is very therapeutic. Um, imagine when you come to the workshop, you're choosing your favorite uh, fragrance and also to melt the wax and to pour the wax into the container and wait for it to dry. The whole process is very therapeutic. Now, if you're no stranger to aromatherapy, you've probably heard of diffusers. But if you want to fill your home with a soothing aroma, personally, I prefer scented candles because not only can I choose my own color, the size, the scents, if it's a personalized design, it can also be a unique home decor item. First, we have to melt down the wax. Uh, we have to heat it up to around 70 to 80 degrees. So when it's up to 70 to 80 degrees, then we will add in alcohol we have to add in the alcohol to prevent the wax to cool down too fast. Then the next step, we would um, start adding uh, color. Then we could start piping. Usually, is the bottom is it covered by other things, and that's why you're not um, closing the ends, or? Yes, yeah, so when we put in our cupcake, we use a leaf to cover oh, the bottom. Oh, okay, mm. okay. So when it's done, then move the flour onto a plastic board and then wait for it to dry. So it's actually used the same similar kind of um, techniques too when you bake wax and also uh, buttercream. You use the same piping back and maybe the same piping tip as well. For soy flour piping, it's actually not easy to, to do. Just like um, playing a musical instrument, um, it takes time to uh, practice a lot. Because wax is affected by temperatures. When the weather is getting cold, then we could use the hickam to help with it. Uh, it will become very, very soft, so we have to master the mixture. Um, in between the right mixture, then we could start piping the wax out. So when you see the flower side crack a little bit, then you could use the heat gun to help with it. Usually when we think of candles, it's uh, related to uh, festival seasons. For example, Christmas, maybe birthday, and also maybe a special dinner with your beloved one. 
Uh, we will take Earl Grey tea for instance. When we think of Earl Grey tea, in, we could think of maybe a relaxing afternoon tea with your friends and lovely dessert. It actually would give you a really good memorable moment, it's a happiness. So maybe uh, one day when you get home and you light up your candle, um, you start smelling of the Earl Grey scent. So all of the enjoyable moments and good memories will bring back to you. Um, we call that aromacology, which is um, a special uh, influence on the human behavior on the special odors and also the relationship between your feelings and emotions. There's a golden rule for uh, candle burning. So first, uh, we have to burn for one hour for every inches in diameter of the candle. For instance, if we have um, two inches um, candle across, we should burn it for two hours. And second, you should always trim the candle wick and clear out the debris when burning candle. It will burn up to 25% longer if we are trimming the candle wick every couple of hours. And also always keep the candle in a dry and dark place and also put the lid on to protect the fragrance and also to protect the wax. I like buying scented candles from time to time, but usually it's like the ones in the glass jars. I didn't know that candles could come in so many different varieties. I mean, you can make it look like a flower or a cake. That's a visual enjoyment by itself. But what I didn't know is that the aroma can diffuse without even burning it. That way you can save the beautiful appearance of the candle. After the break, for those who want to make the most romantic day of the year a part of your love story, let's talk with designers who specialize in bridal dresses and shoes. For me, fashion is more than just a beautiful garment that fits you well and makes you look pretty. It is more like a wearable art. Making and designing a dress is kind of a media for me to express my feelings and points of view. Hi guys, this is Kev Yu. Welcome to my fashion world. Kev believes fashion is a unique medium to express his personal tastes and beliefs. As a renowned fashion designer who's inspired and nurtured by European fashion culture, Kev loves to use wedding dresses to express his inner fashion world. Could you share with us the story behind your collection? It has been three years since I present my previous collection in Shanghai, so I had a pretty long break to reveal myself and my designs. The brand itself also had pros for over 70 years, so the current collection resembles a fresh start for both the brand and me. Regardless of my expressions through the creations, I also feel like I have a mission to persevere with the brand's heritage. For this collection, lots of vintage elements like French lace, ruffles and floral appliques have been used. However, I never intended to create a brand image of vintage wedding gowns, so all the mentioned elements are applied with a contemporary twist like the reversed ruffles and the cut-out details and the reconstruction of embellishment on traditional lace. In my own opinion, exploring new directions is as important as maintaining the brand's heritage. All these details are absolutely beautiful. How would you describe your design philosophy? My design philosophy is simple. I want to make every woman pretty and confident. And I believe everyone has their own aesthetic. And there should never be a particular trend nor style to follow. I think we should celebrate our own uniqueness rather than squeezing ourselves into this tiny box of stereotype. Definitely. I think every woman wants to be unique at heart. When designing wedding gowns, how do you strike a balance between unique and timeless? Mm, I think there's a boundary when it comes to designing a wedding gown. It has to be a timeless piece, but also be able to represent your own style. Apart from exploring different silhouettes to fulfill each figure, my design team and I also try to explore diversity in the color of white. We try to combine different styles of laces to create depth and dimension. And with the use of metallic thread, we make the gowns shimmer elegantly. What 
you say is the difference between designing a wedding gown and a normal dress? Mm, of course, there's a massive difference between a dress and a wedding gown. The internal construction of the garment is what mainly determines a successful garment. We have to apply boning and padding onto different places to enhance the woman's figure. And measurement has to be precise. Only one centimeter would create an enormous difference on a lady's body. So every little detail counts. If you had to use three words to describe your design philosophy, what would they be? Mm, I think that would be classic, elegant, but contemporary. When it comes to picking your wedding gown, it's got to be unique. Just like Kev said, every woman is different, so it's best to pick a gown that reflects your personality and complements your figure the most. After all, it's your day to shine. Your wedding is a special moment in your life, and a lot of brides spend a lot of time and effort looking for the perfect wedding dress, but spend less time looking for the perfect pair of bridal shoes. But actually, the pair of shoes you wear on your wedding day is really important. It's a big part of that moment in your life. Wing used to work in the fashion industry, but has recently shifted her design passion to shoe design. In her opinion, involving the wearer is the best way to create a pair of shoes. Thus, she started to design bridal shoes and bespoke occasional shoes that can fulfill the wearer's dreams. Hi Wing, why did you decide to shift your focus from designing fashion to designing shoes? Well, when I was back in school, I studied fashion design and after I graduated, um, I started working with handbags, accessories and footwear. And when I got married, I noticed that um, we're missing a um, very special bespoke wedding shoes brand in Hong Kong, um, which you could customize your heel heights and your materials. So I, I thought it's a great idea to um, start this brand. Mm, that sounds very cool. Now what's your design philosophy when it comes to designing bridal shoes? Well, I think timeless wedding shoes is very important and it's great to make it um, comfortable and wearable. And I think where, um, uh, storytelling footwear is also an important um, aspect of it. Are there any unique design elements that you incorporate into your designs? Like I mentioned earlier, I think storytelling details is very important. So we include a um, bespoke monogram on the bottom of the shoes, which you could specialize. Um, you can customize your monogram or um, special message on the bottom of the shoes. Now, if you think designing a pair of bridal shoes is not that difficult, think again because creating an exquisite and comfortable pair needs more than only the designer's aesthetic sense and designing skills. In fact, there are loads of things that need to be considered. And what are some challenges that you come across when taking all those into account, like they have to be comfortable and timeless? Mm -hmm. So when we start designing um, our wedding shoes, we start with um, special last that um, is also comfortable and beautiful. Um, we also try to create slimming last, um, which you can wear them in different heel heights and also um, which can also fit Asian feet. Wing believes that a pair of bridal shoes should also be flexible enough to go from wedding day to any special occasion because despite its name, Bridal Shoes, it shouldn't be only for your once-in-a-lifetime wedding party, but also transformable from day to evening. Now, how would you describe your own uh, designer shoes? Like, would you say they're very classy, timeless, very haute couture? How would you describe Well, I think our shoes are very timeless because from, let's say, 10 years from now, you still think they're beautiful and they don't go out of style. <laughs> Sounds excellent. Now, which shoes are your own favorite pair? Well, my favorite pair of shoes is the glitter um, crystal pumps um, with a tile design at the back of the shoes. And we could also incorporate a removable ankle strap, which you can tie around your ankle, which create a ballerina styling. Oh, and that sounds very comfortable, so the shoes won't fall off too, right? Definitely. <laughs> and now, why do you think every woman deserves to have a pair of bespoke bridal shoes? Mm -hmm. 
Well, again, I think it's important to have a comfortable pair of wedding shoes for your big day because you wear, the, you wear them from day to evening. And um, it's also a great um, memorable items that you can keep and treasure after your weddings. I fully agree. I really like that pair of versatile heels because I can add a sash to make a bow, different color ribbons, or even a flower. And I really like to mix and match. So a pair of heels that can adjust to my outfit is a perfect pair for me. Everything about your wedding may bring you back to that touching moment. You may not be able to wear your bridal gown as your daily outfit, but you can certainly rewear your bridal shoes. Therefore, having a pair of timeless and versatile designer bridal shoes would be the perfect choice. And that's all the time we have for this week's episode. If you want to find out more about what we've introduced, remember to log on to our website. In the coming weeks, let's explore the path to a sweeter life. Join us to save our seasonal delights from around the globe. Check out ways to stay healthy and look gorgeous. Keep up with the latest trend in every aspect of life. And connect with inspiring people from different backgrounds. Be sure to tune in again next time to live your best life.